the right side of the vehicle within the car about 17 to 18 seconds and uh sorry myself a burn survivor because i was wearing the proper safety gear uh, <clears throat> this is my helmet suit it's all very burned i received a second and third degree burns in my face because i had my, my face shield open because i was exiting the car i didn't have a headstock on it was about the only piece of safety gear that i didn't have on that i do wear it now i raced it a few weeks ago at the mint 400 and and I definitely wore that along with all my other safety gear. Um, uh, the other thing I did that, that I think saved my life was held my breath. <clears throat> heard, heard of uh, numerous drivers that have died from, from plane congestion, and uh, so I held my breath, and my net wouldn't go down on my side. Barely my belts unhooked, my helmets, uh, air, water, radio unhooked, and was able to go out the right side of the car. The co-rider had exited the car as soon as we pulled into the pit. So I, as soon as my net wouldn't go down, I was able to find the alternative way to get out. Um, yeah, I've just been really trying to push people, especially the off-road world, because that's where I come from, along with the midget turn cars, is to, and the USAC mandates, the no max underwear, and that's where I got used to wearing it, is because of the mandation there, and in off-road, it's not, and so I, I, there's you know a few people that do wear it, and this just shows how important it was uh, the, the tire changer that was pulling the left rear tire off, he was not wearing any fire gear and received burns to 50% of his body. <clears throat> was in the hospital for four months and uh, survived, but, but a very bad situation. Um, you know, and, and this race is being in Mexico, Baja, Mexico, um, through very uh, remote places, and uh, we're very lucky that it was in Loreto where there was a hospital nearby, a ambulance was there within 10 or 15 minutes. So the situation it could have been a lot worse, uh, you know, for the places that the, the races travel. So, um, you know, I think everyone just needs to wear the right safety gear. Um, think about, you know, holding your breath if you're ever on fire. Uh, during refueling, as always know what side the fueling's on. <clears throat> so if fueling on one side, you know to exit the car on the other side. They, they got some photos of, uh, I think, from the hospital. Uh, like I said, I was there two and a half weeks, had two surgeries, um, and I had second and third degree burns in my face, uh, both hands, second degree burns on my left elbow, and third degree burns on my right heel. Um, I had no neck socks on, but I had a uh, very tiny hole in the heel of the sock, and just that hole uh, you know, made, got burns on my heel. Is my face because uh, <clears throat> didn't have a headstock on and had my shield open because I was exiting the car and when it ignited I did not have a chance to close the face shield which this was a, a clear face shield so I think even if I had it down trying to exit the car trying to find my way out could have possibly opened it anyway so that's why I think uh, headstocks are very important like Dr. Trammell said. this uh, 
that. My family came to see me. The main concern was that the other guy and his crew was okay, and then I was supposed to race turkey night four days later, which is a, a USAC midget race, and I said to my mom and my wife that <clears throat> I was bummed I don't get to race turkey night, and they both were wondering why I was uh, worried about racing in that condition, but um, saw a quick picture of my hands. I had you know, second and third degree burns to both hands. I had uh, two layer Carbonex gloves on, but your hands are what gotta get you out of the fire, so. So wearing good gloves, you know, and uh, you know, and all the other stuff. So, um, anyone have any questions for me? <coughs> yeah. My suit was uh, cut off because my hands were so burnt. <laughs> Completely burnt everywhere. Um, it was a pretty new suit. Um, you know, Alpine Star Suit did a great job, but I had the Nomex underwear underneath that, that I think really is what helped me. Yeah. You, you mentioned that you didn't breathe. How how difficult was it to have that presence of mind to not breathe? Uh, I imagine it's, your first instinct is to want to gasp or something like that. How did you prepare yourself for that? because it's, it's an experience we don't have to prepare ourselves for. How did you prepare yourself to not gasp? Or I think it's mainly because of other people's misfortune, heard of uh, you know, other people passing away after a fire because of that. You know, they'll have minor burns, but then have flames in their lungs. Uh, a lot of sprint car midget crashes I've heard of, I've heard of that. And so and I don't really know why, with help from God or uh, you know, just other experiences that I've heard of, but you know, that's one thing my brothers that have raced, uh, you know, as long as I've been alive, and my dad, <clears throat> longer I've been alive, and uh, you know, they, none of them said they would think of to hold their breath. And so that's one thing I've been trying to tell a lot of racers, is to hold your breath. Um, one other question, if I may, is uh, does a face shield, if, when it burns, is there any uh, toxic vapors that come out of that material? Uh, I don't know, I believe one of the experts here might have something like that. No, it, it doesn't make any toxic gases. That's part of the, the right, you know, yeah, uh, part of the smell yeah. test and the yeah, uh, I, I, so you know, and uh, I mean, I think you know, the toxics even of it wouldn't be as bad as breathing the flame. It seems like the thing I've heard on that. So can be in the smell or can be a fire. Uh, if you wear a smell, they say helmets. It's in, inside this fire proof on the the shield is fire proof is a three millimeter thick shield. It's bullet proof, not bullet, but five hundred kilometers proof on a, on a stone, and uh, you have a fire test, and a very good fire test. You have no risk. I'm assuming you couldn't see much once the fire broke out. How many drivers do you think practice getting out of the vehicle? in an emergency situation, before it ever happens with their eyes closed? Uh, not very many. Uh, luckily in the off-road world, we have to do driver changes and we have to do tire changes. So that's something my brother and I have always worked on, is, is practicing, you know, getting out of the car for driver changes and tire changes to be able to get back in. Um, so that's also kind of for fire safety. Um, in the uh, short course off-road world, you're not doing driver changes or tire changes. so. Different drivers I've worked with, I've had them practice getting out of the car and you know getting their nets down and be yelling and screaming at them to try to put them in a panic like you would be in a fire. Um, so yeah, that's something that, that is very important too is to be able to get out of the car. Um, you know, I was in the car 17, 18 seconds, and with all the practices I've done, you know, I can get out quicker than that. Of course, when you actually have to get the fire, you have different issues, and that, the main one was the, the net not going down on my side. My seatbelts, I got to up in them just a little bit. That cost me a little bit of time. So, um, yeah, I know I could get out quicker if I had to do it again, which I hope I don't have to in that situation. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, having people practice that, you know, and uh, being a crew member or something and, you know, voicing your opinion on having your drivers practice that is something that could save someone's life. I think that's critical as well because in every situation I've ever talked to a driver who's had to get out of one of those kinds of situations, Every one of them says you can't see anything. And 
I don't know that anybody ever practices getting out with their eyes closed yeah. because that's effectively what you're going to have to do in an emergency situation. So it's probably a good idea to build it into your practice. Yeah, I talked to Dr. Chamel about, you know, uh, guys, boat racers and guys in the Navy have to practice in a, a dump tank upside down and have to, you know, learn to swim down. And the biggest thing is not to panic in that situation. Were you using the uh, side nets on both sides? Uh, no, just, just the regular nets uh, did not have the head nets. Uh, and that's something in the, the short course off-road that's kind of required, and so it's a, a second net. You know, if you're going out one side, you have two nets, go out the other side, you have only one still, but, um, you know, to, to know where those are with, uh, you know, I had my eyes open the whole time, and luckily I don't have any damage to my eyes, but I was able to see fairly well, um, because I think it wasn't, the fire was so big, the smoke was above, and uh, so, you know, I, I might have long-term damage from that, and maybe wish I closed my eyes during, but um, was, was just most concerned with getting out of that car. I'm curious as to, uh, they're being pretty common now, the side curtains, and, and uh, I'm an advocate of the side curtains. No, I think they're uh, very important. Would you be able to, we always train, and, and I also teach to open, we're, we're quick to open this one, but how would you, do you think you could have found that in the fire, to open the side curtain? Yeah, it's uh, in the midget and sprint cars I race, I, um, even before they mandated them, I always ran cage nets just because of uh, talking to people with Dr. Trammell and stuff and what, you know, the, how safe it is. And especially before we were wearing the head and neck restraints, like the Hans and, uh, you know, and so I think having those nets and then being able to practice and know exactly where they are. Um, you know, I was, well, you know, because of the practice of the tire changes and driver changes, I, as soon as I was on fire, I went for the net. When the net wasn't going down, I was still trying to pull it off and I went for my belt and my helmet at the same time. So I was trying to do two things at once. Just two more questions, so we'll be we'll stay on target. Thank you for timing. Uh, what was your level of awareness of the protection that you had before the accident? In other words, had you ever inquired about uh, actual what you, actually what your suit was doing, what your helmet was capable of, or were you just were you just buying the product that's advertised and not ask any questions about it. Yeah, I um, wouldn't say he was an expert on it, like some of the experts here, but I, I have been very in tune with safety and something I've always uh, tried to make sure that I'm wearing and something my parents have taught me, my brothers have taught me, but you know, my brothers teach me to be safe. They didn't wear no next underwear until they saw this. So they learned from, from my misfortune. Um, it's something that uh, four years ago when the Lucas Oil Off-Road Series started, I was talking to the, the chief uh, technical director and asked them why they didn't mandate no mix underwear in that. And this is way before I had this fire. So it's something I've always, uh, you know, looked for is for people to be safe. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, this is a fun sport, but it's dangerous. So, um, you know, I think you've got to do everything to be safe and, and be able to walk away from these accidents. Yeah. 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 Just if I may, do you think like an onboard uh, fire extinguisher would have helped you? Uh, we had an onboard fire extinguisher, a halo system, but I did not get a chance to, to pull it. Um, you know, afterwards, I was thinking I should have pulled the halo bottle, but you know, the, uh, it was so hot that I was just trying to get out of it. So I think you know, a halo bottle that's, that's heat activated is something that I definitely want to install in, in future race cars that I drive because when you're on fire, it's, it's, you know, it takes extra seconds to be able to pull it. It might buy you a couple seconds, so um, you know, hindsight, I you know, don't know if I w would have pulled it um, because I was so concerned with getting out of the car. What was Lucas Oil's uh, reason for not mandating no max underwear? Um, they, Pardon me, can we repeat that please? But why was uh, Lucas Oil, you know, why didn't they mandate it? I don't think uh, anyone off road has mandated it and you know, I don't know the cost of it, which it's, it's cheap in comparison, like Dr. Trammell said, compared to the hospital bills that, that I had. Um, and you know how they mandate it, <clears throat> how they you know how they check for it, um, which is a hard thing. But I think if it's just a rule, like it was in USAC, and so I had to buy it and got used to wearing it. Now I feel naked if I don't have you no know, mixed underwear on under a driving suit. So I think even if it's not properly followed through on you know on mandating it, just having it the rule at least helps the new guys coming in. That you know it's hard to 
teach the guys that have been racing it forever new things, but new guys, you can teach them and then they'll wear it and be used to it. People always go back to this thing as it's uncomfortably hot in the, the suit. I do think, have you ever seen an Arab riding a camel in the desert, bareback, you know, in his swim shorts? Um, it's always covered up with layers and layers of stuff um, because it's cooler that way. Um, you can have, you know, see painters outside paint, they got long underwear on underneath their shirts because it's cooler. Um, point one. Point two, pointed things, small surface areas, tip of your nose, ladies, other parts, are constant stretch, con are heat concentrators, they get really hot. And that's why you want the, the uh, Nomex head sock that's got the nose piece, not, not this thing. If your nose is sticking out of it, it's not a good idea. Um, Gloves while your hands get burned. Most gloves, the, the part that has to be heat sensitive is the palm. You know, that, that retards heat transfer, not the back or the parts between or where the seams are. You know, he's going to tell you more about how the gloves are made and ask him later, but the, the seam is a big deal. The other part is if your hands sweat under the glove, as soon as that glove gets hot and you close your fist, you get a steam burn in the back of your hand. That's what happened to uh, Simona and Sylvester when she she grabbed the wheel to try and take it off, and that's when she burned her hands. The, the flame didn't do it. So, that's and that's it. one of the things too is that a lot of people, you know, with the Nomex underwear, talk about how hot it is, and uh, I can tell you how hot a fire is. Um, the other thing I've heard from a lot of people was how itchy the Nomex underwear, you know, undergarments can be, and I can tell you how itchy burns are when they're starting to heal. Uh, I prescribe special medication for that, so um, two reasons that aren't very valid, so. And it's like we were talking about before, the hand and the material, you know, it's just buying in a bag, it feels what it feels like. Some of it's like, whoa, it's really scratchy. And then there's some that are like really nice. I use them for, I use my fire retardant underwear for long johns in the winter. Um, it works well and they feel good. It feels soft.